welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. I'm Fred. Fred? Who's yeah. Fred? That's me. I'm Fred. So you're the opposite of Durf? Yeah. Okay. I'm Fred. Today he's Fred. Alright, this is weekly update 163, I think, and it is December 9th? December 9th. Yep, December 9th. Oh my goodness. Merry Christmas. It's the season correct mm -hmm. all right so in the barn stalls get over here in the shop you're not in the shop there we go not on me i don't even have my coffee to wake me up what are you eating this morning this time around waffles get up on me okay get your waffles come on so i don't have my coffee <laughs> All right, in the barn stalls. What's going on in the barn stalls? It's cold in the barn stalls. Why is it cold? We were like 80 degrees the other day, and now like we woke up like 10. 10, 12. Yeah. And it's supposed to be back up to 60 something by Monday. Like 62, 63. Tomorrow. No, it's only supposed to be like 50 something tomorrow. Mm. And then Monday. So Sunday and Monday. Yeah, it's supposed to get back up there. I don't know. That's Oklahoma weather for you. Freeze in one day and not the next. Oh, thank you. I can empty plate, but no coffee. Okay, so in the barn stalls, other than it being cold, we did have one calf with a bellyache, right? All the horses got trimmed or new shoes, right? What else? What else? We're on in the barn stalls, not food. In the barn stalls. Um, what else? Um, we still have the two baby calves in the barn. Yeah. Um, we've actually put a jacket on one who's still just kind of thin. Huh. Eats decent and does okay. We'll have to giving him a bottle morning and night. I, I think we're going to go back to giving him a bottle. He's just a little thin. Um, got a belly ache, got scours, and then there just no cheese. Well, I'm starting to get a little... This is all I've had to eat this morning, and he's being stingy. <laughs> okay, what else in the barn stalls? They don't want to just see us watch eat breakfast, so. Mm. We had to pull the one calf off the pasture because he had mm. a belly ache. Mm. Other than that, they're really doing good. Um. Ice and Durf have a few little scuffles out in their new pen, but mm -hmm. nothing terrible. Um, how's Whiskey doing with her limp? She's out for another six weeks. Mm -hmm. How come? They say thought she had a little bruise, mm -hmm. one spot that was sensitive on her foot. So she just tender footed, I think. But we'll get it to heal up, and then if she's still. Um, tender but we'll put shoes on her and that will help take some of the pressure off of her hook um, because we can't find anything in the joint can't find anything in the muscle anything like that right right all right moving on mending fences what have we been working on this week staying warm <laughs> hey look I built a little thing <laughs> are you playing with your food no, I'm building with my food. There's a difference. See? You built a chimney. Yep. A chimney. Oops, it wasn't crooked. It's a very crooked chimney. Yep. I wouldn't build a fire in there. <laughs> no. Anyway. We've been trying to get the Christmas stuff done, right? I'm good for right now. Maybe in a few minutes after we're done. Oh, yeah. We, uh... Put up my flamingos. Mm -hmm. And the candy cane arch, right? Mm -hmm. We still have the manger set to do. <laughs> it got cold on us. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and I've got a few wreaths still to put out. But other than that, we're good, right? Mm -hmm. I got a little bit more to do. I've got to clean up the bar. I've got to get those up. 16 days till Christmas. I know. Mm -hmm. So, Anyway, um, this weekend we're working on our Christmas letter, getting our Christmas cards out, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, 
What else are we working on around here? What do we have planned? We didn't get it done this week because um, Lowe's didn't have what we need, or Home Depot didn't have what we needed. But what did we stop at Home Depot to get last time? Oh, you're not freezing. Stop it. That's what we've been doing. <laughs> That's what you've been doing. Um, what didn't Home Depot have? Spigot. Hey. Spigot. Yeah, the faucets. So when we get those, right now we've got everything we're doing with garden hoses. We'll stay warm by digging ditches. That's right. But we didn't and get And building done. fires. Lots and lots of fires. I do. I get up every morning and build him a fire, don't I? I build one out of the barn, too, so. With the trash. <laughs> to keep warm. In the winter, I never have a problem getting him to take out the trash and burn it. I even have a second barrel that I hold all my trash from out there at the barn in so I can burn it when it gets cold. Yeah. That's wonderful, isn't it? Mm-hmm. All right. What do we got going on in the yarn farm? Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot. I'm getting ready to cart up a bunch of bats and start spinning for our fiber festival in January. Right? Mm -hmm. And then um, we'll probably just have a big fleece sale there too. Right? Yeah, we have lots of fleece. Yeah. Um, I wonder why. <laughs> I don't know why either. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you think that's funny? <laughs> you can't stop laughing about us having too much fleece. Um, okay, so nothing else really in the yarn farm. Although we have, um, I'm going to kind of put this out there, but not really. Um, I'm not going to give you any dates. Julianne from Dirt Patch Heaven is going to come and she is, you know, I do those free gardening classes. She's going to be one of the speakers about her hot beds like her raised up hotbeds how she does that in her um greenhouse and then um she is also planning to bring the whole family down for our thing in april and maybe do a dirt patch have a meet up at the shaw family farm during our big festival cool yep that is amazing that's so cool. that is cool that's cool but anyway those are things in the works that's cool all right. That's cool. Will you stop? Oh, yes. I don't know. I don't watch a whole lot of movies. All right. So. This little guy was Anything else? That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Anything else? If you remember what movie that is, put it in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what else we got going on? In the farmhouse. What did we do all week? Really? Um, we did spend... It takes all day to do those courses. Um, that's one thing that people don't understand is it really does... It takes a little over an hour to shoe one. It takes over an hour to shoe one. Just right at an hour. Because ours he knows, so it doesn't take as long to do ours because mm -hmm. he's the only one that's ever done her. So he knows what it was like last week, last time, and he knows it this time. And he's been doing coop for 13... No. Eight. Eight years. So... He knows how she does, but then we had two horses out here that are outside horses, and if they're going to keep coming around here, they had to be done right. One had a limp, and it's from the fact that both horses on the left side mm -hmm. were slanted, and, and I'm pretty sure it's the way the guy holds the shoe, but you have to make sure you get them level. So it's kind of like you having a wedge and your foot walking like this and this one walking flat. So this one's always turned in a little bit. And that's not, it, it hurts your muscles, hurts your feet, hurts your everything. Try walking just on the inside of your foot, on one foot, for six weeks. Well, this horse has had it done to him for three years, four years. And the same guy was shooing them for three or four years. Yeah, they're bound so. to be. They're bound to be sore. But um, the one, Lama, uh, what is its name? Mocha? No. Latte. Latte is doing much better. And what are you doing? Oh my gosh. I'm bored. I see. Um, but Latte. Um, okay. He instantly was doing much better. Why did you lie to me? <laughs> oh, there. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, turn it off. Um, 
but anyway, Latte was instantly, she's a younger horse, everything, correct? Oh, I could do that. And then um, the older horse is like 17, and he's going to take a little bit more healing. So um, it's just one of those things that it's... It is what it is. I don't have one for snow. I'm glad. I don't have one for tropical beach either. That I can live with. Mm. But they have more. What the heck? How'd you get them? Oh, I'm just that good, dude. Oh, no. You're not doing those. <laughs> right. Oh, here we go. Christmas! Merry Christmas! It's not Christmas yet, huh? You have 16 more days. But I can say Merry Christmas. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I took it off already. You like the one right there on the corner where it's snowing. <laughs> hey, Moose. What are you doing? You want up in the shot. There he is. There's Moose. Don't get in my face. There's Moose. Let him see Moose for a minute. You let him see Kid all the time. Look at Moose. He says, flowers. <laughs> Flower dandelions. That is the flower of military kids. What's this one? Moose, you can't get up there. Happy birthday. <laughs> it's not our birthday. Moose's little tail is just going. I know why he wants up here for my food. Oh. <laughs> Go on. Ah, ah, Moose, can't no. believe you let the little corn artist. How about unplug it? Hey. Up? No. Little corn artist. Got you just want trouble. my food. Ah, ah, get Moose. He's going to unplug us if we're not careful, so. That's why uh, you shouldn't have let him up here by my phone. Well, I didn't think about it. Kid, no, get. Get, dogs, go. All you heathens. <laughs> Down. All the way. There. And I stole his food. It's a little <laughs> cow. <laughs> mm -mm. I'm a heifer. No, I'm not. I'm a cow. I've already had to kill. So. Oh, look. It's got, like... What the? I haven't played with this in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> RJ, you look funny. Uh, I'd hate to know what you look like. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get back to our podcast. Yes, let's. Alright, now. <laughs> Let's go with this one. There we go. Alright, it's snowing. Moose, <laughs> no. Now stop. No, I hate been to see. Alright, enough of the silliness. In the farmhouse, where were we at? Oh. Oh, it's probably a cowboy hat. Uh huh. <laughs> And that gave me a chance to get something to eat. <laughs> okay. We did it in the yarn farm. We did things. So, uh, yeah, it's in the farmhouse. So, what's been going on in the farmhouse? Decorating. You can go for a round. You've been cleaning. working. Yeah. You've been working. Yep. I cleaned the whole front room, right? Mm -hmm. Um, done a lot of dishes, cleaned out the fridge, um, that kind of stuff. Nothing real, real exciting, huh? Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't talk about all those escapes that happened. Why don't we back up and tell you, tell them what's been going on. What happened the other night? Alright, we rewinded. <laughs> Very reminded. Okay. So, that thumping you hear is Dad trying to chop firewood. Mm -hmm. But he won't chop the old firewood because he has to move it from over there to over here. So he's trying to ch chop the new firewood, which is hardwood, and he can't do it. Anyway. Here, so I'll tell about the escapes. Now, tell about the escapes. What was the first? You went into bed, right? Uh huh. Hey, I'm going to sharpen another axe, please. It's out there at the barn. I can't get it. I 
Well, she's a brave lady. It's cold outside. She didn't even get a go. So, all right. This is when it wasn't like walk outside and freeze to death cold. It was just kind of cold. I go to bed, laying there in bed, just about to sleep. Mom starts screaming. The sheep are out. The sheep are out. So, I jump up, put on my slippers, and I'm in my jammies. Get my coat, my light coat, not my heavy, heavy coat, just a light coat. And my little rope, my sheep rope, and I go barreling out there. And Murphy's in the pen where... It's a miniature donkey. The miniature donkey, Murphy. He's in the pen where the cuties and... Uh, it's a yard pen. The yard pen. He's in there. The cuties were supposed to be in there. With the rail. And he's the only thing in there. Not a sheep one. And Ralphie and all the sheep were on Murphy's side. And nothing was where they were supposed to be. The other side of the pasture was just clear. It all just came over. <laughs> yes, she was, Mom. The big donkey was over there, too. Was over there, too, Uh-huh. So. So, we get Murphy locked in that pen. Get everything put back together. Go open the gates. Run them all back across. And I tell Mom, I'll just catch the ram. And I'll sort the ewes back in the morning. So I got my rope. And I'm going to run across the pasture. And I finally get close enough to him. Because he's got four feet and I got two. And I'm not a very fast runner. Especially, your Especially my slippers. I'm about to slip and fall down about three times. I get him roped. And because it's dark, I can't see that I got him caught. So I wait just a second after I throw it to make sure he's in it. So I get him around the belly. And I got him. And I got my rope. And I'm just back there like a sled. Just skiing around. Because my slippers have absolutely no traction. And it's cold as all get out. And I keep yelling at mom. Shine the light. Shine the light. And I finally get up by his head. And I still have no traction folks. And I got him. Like I got him in a headlock. I mean I got him. And we're still a going. And still a going like the Energizer Bunny. We're just going circles out here. And I got my feet. I mean, it's not like he's just dragging me around. I'm just. My slippers are just so slick, they're just sliding across the ground. And I got him, and I got him. And the donkeys are all going off. There's a train going by. And every little glimpse of silence is filled by my mom laughing. All you hear is. And then, no, there was no being quiet about this. This sounded like, I mean, she was about to fall over and roll down the hill laughing at me. I was chuckling. Chuckling? No, that was laughter, Mom. She was laughing. And I mean laughing. And then she finally comes through the gate out there where I am. And brings me a little bit of light. And just, ha, 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 the whole way big old barrel of laughs. And I'm like, quit laughing and help! So where'd you get the ram to? So I finally got him out to the ram pen. I just shoved him out there for the night. Well, he's still there. I just decided to heck with him. He can stay out there if he's going to tear down fences. Okay. And, and I turn, let's see, I turned the Shetlands and Burl out on the pasture. So that way he could breed anything that was still open. And I took snow. Yeah, he's a little guy. He throws really small lambs. So. But uh, I pulled snow off the pasture because he, that's his, da her daughter, father. And then um, I pulled a couple of goats that could use a little extra feed. Sit down, come join us. Because I just told you a favorite story. Yes, okay. So, but here's the thing. That's not the end of the story, is it? Oh, no. You so. can finish the rest of it. I need to take a nap. You need to take a nap? Mm -hmm. Why? Well, I need my beauty sleep. Oh, you're past that. <laughs>
Okay, well, so she nice? we go in and go to bed, right? Cause I'll that just was have my favorite Sherry Pepsi. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we go in and go to bed. That was at what time? Midnight, probably. Well, all right. Bright and early the next morning, I get a call from the sheriff's department. Mm-hmm. And I'm told my cows are loose in town. They said there you. are cows loose in town. Yeah. Are they yours? Well, she said there's cattle that are up in town, that are loose in town. Do you have a tan and white calf? I said, yes, ma'am. Do you have a couple of black calves? Yes, ma'am. Well, they're probably yours then. So I get in, get him up. I remind you, I'm still in my pajamas and my slippers at this proceeding point. I don't know what his problem is. He's fully clothed. They're cold. I'm in my old nasty sweat. <laughs> you at least had your sweats on. They're warm. These pajamas are like when you walk outside. They're if, camo fleece lot like. They're, they're, if they're the, the wind thinks about blowing, it cuts through them. It does. I mean, it's like, you might as well walk outside in a pair of athletic shorts. Yeah. But when you so, go to sleep, they're comfortable. But anyway, so we have cattle, and we're like, yeah, we're, we're going, you know. So I go up in town. We can't find them. We drive the road. Finally, we pull off the side of the road, and RJ count all of our cattle. Mm -hmm. And what'd you figure out? Oh, they're not ours. Now, when we say loose in town, we actually called to get a better description because I was then awake. You know, it's the crack of dawn. I'm, oh my gosh, you know. Uh, and what did she tell us? That it was what? By the fire department. Right, by the fire department. And now our cattle can make it to the edge of town. The town is only, what, a mile away if they take this old highway. And if you go up, if they were to wander up to my neighbors, they have some dogs that would chase them. So it's not improbable. Um, let's put it this way. It's not impossible, just more improbable. You know. Yeah, because the dogs are chasing them. I should come back home. Yes. But anyway, so we're up there driving around. We drive around this. Our town has like 320 people in it. And that's on a good day if you count all the dogs and all the cattle and all the horses and all the... <laughs> yeah, you might want to start counting all the cats and dogs too. Mm-hmm. So, we Just drive around. Strict. How long did we drive around that town? 30 minutes. That town is probably one mile wide by one mile wide. No, maybe two miles wide. It's only one mile long. No, it's From two miles long. It's one mile wide. One mile wide, and it's a mile long. From Quest to Road 12, that's... One mile. One mile. That's 11 to 12. It's mm -hmm. one mile. That's two miles. That's road 14. Or road 10. Quest is on road 10. So maybe it is two miles long. Two miles long. So two miles long, one mile wide. Yep. And we were up there lost, driving around, looking for cattle. And we never saw. Well, I saw one. But then mom He's... wouldn't want to go that way. She wanted to go another way. So I lost it. I was going up around the block to turn around. How far could it go, right? So then we get home, establish that they're not ours, which next time I will look in our pasture first, okay? It's just when you get a call from the sheriff's department, they describe your cattle. I guess it can describe a lot of cattle, huh? Mm-hmm. But normally we have About the white. About half the cows in America. Yeah, but around here, most people have black or red. The tans are us, correct? We have white cattle. We have zebu, and people don't say... Zebu, they they just they think they're calves, huh? Mm -hmm. So anything that's white or tan, we normally get the call because Hollisters used to be here and they had white charlets. But with them gone, it's just assumed that they're ours because we're one of the few people that have white cattle, correct? Mm -hmm. So um, later that day, what happens, son? Because I'm eating my crack. Tell them what happened. Guy showed up. We were spotted looking for cows in town. He comes to my door and demands his cattle back. Mm -hmm. um, what did we tell him? We didn't have them. 
Yep. But so we explained the whole idea that we never saw him, we never picked him up. He said he found the tan one, but his two blacks were still missing. But I guess somebody had spotted us looking for the cattle and told them we must have had it. I didn't even have a trailer on, guys. <laughs> we called the sheriff's department, let them know. They sent an officer to go help him find his own cattle. Right? It was kind of comical. So, anything else happened that day? How many times has Lucky escaped this week? <laughs> this week? Mm -mm. This week once. It was last week he got out last time. <laughs> How many times have you had to go fix fence? Yep. Oh, should we tell about the truck? Nah. In the farmhouse. Yes, there was actually something. What happened with my truck? It fell apart. Just driving down the road and stuff started falling off of it. Did not. Then explain the call. I'm at the auto parts store and the truck broke down. Didn't just fall apart. Um, explain it I another took way. it for an estimate, right? And it just fell apart. Just fell. Just didn't know. Boom, just fell apart. Okay, are you done? No, not really, but... If you want me to be done, I can pause. Apparently, when I was taking my truck to the other guy, um, there was a quick connect hose that he busted off. And instead of removing the quick connect, he just shoved the hose back up in there. Well, this weekend when I was flushing the radiator with Joe, he told me, he says, this should have a, a clamp or something on it. I said, okay, when I go to the auto parts store to get an estimate on having this screw removed from the spark plug we couldn't get out, I'll talk to them about how to do that. I said, I'll just pick up a clamp and we'll put it on there. Well, I get into town and I shut the truck off at the auto parts store and there's this hiss and psh, and steam starts rolling out the front of my truck and underneath my truck and this water just starts pouring down. It fell apart when she shut the door. Just boom, fell apart. It has to do with the pressure letting off of the, um, what do you call it? Uh, Radiator? Yes, the circulation and all that. So anyway, I called RJ, RJ got Joe, Joe came down and we actually, they had the part I needed to fix the quick connect. Joe cut off the hose, put that up and clamped it down and put it in there and we were good to go. Then I got the screw removed from the spark plug, got home, got the spark plug changed. It runs a lot better, but I may need a new coil pack on that one or not. We're going to have to go and test and see um, what spark plug is missing. When RJ hit the cow, it just kind of knocked all the dirt loose, didn't it? I've got a pulley. I've got I wonder fix. why. i got a pulley. i got a fix. And... Uh, <laughs> Then I think we're going to get some shocks, correct? So, move, move, just move. a little bit here. So, we can be going down the road and not feel like, whoop, there was a hole. Just be like, rum. Yeah, but um, the pulley squeaks and the wreck and the spark plugs, one of them is missing. Um, it's not firing right, but other than that, it's So, we changed them all? No, we didn't change them all. We started with the ones that are throwing the coats. Ah. So, um, and we'll get there. We may have to change them all before it's done. So, all right, so we've had a little truck problems. Um, today, we hope to get our Christmas letter and our Christmas cards done, right? Mm -hmm. I got a rodeo tonight. Yeah, he's got a rodeo tonight, but it'll depend on what all we get done around here. I definitely want to get my bar cleaned up. I do have um, one project in the middle of it that I need to finish, and I want to get it done this year. Every year it has candy in those bags, but we haven't used it this year, so I'm going to revamp it, redo it, and get it done. Thing there. Which thing are we talking about? The bags on the rope, you know, the advent. Oh, yeah. I can't um, figure out what things we're talking about. Oh, there's a lot of things on the bar. Mm -hmm. A lot of tools on the bar that I've been working on. So, anyway, when Archie was little, 
we had this advent calendar and see each bag well they're supposed to have a number on them not all of them are done so you never got them finished i know um, and here's the little rope, and it hangs across the front window. And in the bags, there was normally candy, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to redo them. Let's see, here's the 14th. I'm going to finish up the ones that don't have numbers. See, this one doesn't have a number. We just fill it in wherever. Uh, I see you should put money on them and hang them on the window. That's, that's no. What I am going to do, though, is put either a Bible verse or a good deed in each one. And that way, um, I have my calendar, and the guys were laughing at me. Um, I always do a calendar, and I want to do one thing for Christmas. The fun of Christmas is not Christmas and getting presents. It's the joy of preparing for our Savior. That's the way I look at it. So, if you look at my calendar, not only do I have appointments on there, but I have one thing each day that I'm going to do. Some of it is I'm going to dip some pretzels. I'm going to make cookies and caramel corn. Um, Advent is always on there. I'm going to make some paper boxes to put um, our stuff in. I'm going to make a gingerbread house. I'm going to deliver the cookies to our uh, fire station in that. But write the letter, do the cards, set the menu, wrap gifts. It's all scheduled on here just so I have an idea of one thing I can do each day that prepares me for Christmas Day, the joyous day of our Savior's birth, um, a big meal with my family, and that to me is the fun. I love the journey of getting to Christmas Day. And it was always considered making memories at our house. So, um, I love the whole, like I said, from the day that Thanksgiving is over. I do Christmas every day if it was if it was appropriate and people wouldn't think I was crazy. Hence the hat. People I got already a, think you're crazy. It's okay. I know. I got a ride up to pick up the truck after it was done. After Joe fixed it, Joe dropped me back off here. And then um, a friend of ours was dropping RJ off from work. And she had two daughters to pick up at the high school. And then she was headed back to town. She was going to drop me off. So I'm sitting in the front seat. One didn't even want to get in the car because I had my Santa hat on. And apparently this was their topic of talk on the way home. Why does she have a Santa hat on? Why does she, you know? And the one little girl didn't want to get in. She was like, oh. you know. <laughs> and so I was just like, I just do. And I asked them if they were excited about Christmas, and they said, yeah. And I said, excited to see what you get or excited for another reason? And they just said, yeah. They wouldn't say. So I think they're kind of excited for what they'll get, not the reason for the season. Hopefully I'll make an impact on them. I've already made an impact on them. Their mother wants to show up in one of these lovely hats and pick them up from school, go walking through the school. I told her she should get one. Her and I will go walking to the school. Because they'll all know who we are, right? RJ's over there laughing. He uh, thinks it'd be funny. Because the girls are very, very much about appearances. Okay. Um, and this lady's a single mom. And we went out and helped her um, on Thanksgiving. And her two children just aren't as thankful as they probably should be for life and and things. Even RJ says sometimes they're brats. But, uh, yeah, we could embarrass them good. I told her we should. I don't know that she will. She's not as bold as I am. <laughs> so, anyway, all right, anything else people need to know other than a bunch of silliness? I got cold, so I'm saying. He's in front of the fireplace. In front of the fireplace. <laughs> I didn't tell him for it. Yes, he did. And there is my, oops, we have, um, this hangs from the chandelier. That's one of our decorations. There's our advent wreath. There's what he was eating. Yeah, show him the messy bar. There is the, I'm going to try and cut that out of the shot. There is the um, nativity set. And he's over by the fireplace. And just for kicks, a lot of that is tools and stuff that, and, um, Christmas, decorations. and Christmas decorations. So I've got to get that bar cleaned off. I have a box there that's got some wreaths. Now, got twisty ties. Yes. The wreath that's right there goes to a friend, and that's some ribbon to take to the girls for them to decorate that wreath. Ties. Yes. RJ got new ropes, and on that's the ropes come twisty ties. 
So, and then up there on top of the fridge, we actually have a gift already ready to give, huh? This is just for you. Okay. So, RJ, you about ready to wrap it up? Let me get the wrapping paper and the tape. Uh, wrap it right up. Well, and do you have anything on the porch that you've been working on? Yes, you do. I haven't. Presents. You've been working on Christmas presents. Who are the two Christmas presents for? Nathan and Owen. They don't watch this, so we don't have to worry about it. What are you making? They're two little cowboys. This, yep. Um, one has been trampled by cattle. Multiple times. Multiple times. <laughs> like he's how old? Nine, ten? Ten or eleven. Ten or eleven now. Mm-hmm. And he is uh, been in the hospital two or three times. Yes. He got kicked by a horse one day. He got kicked by a horse one day. Seriously. Um, he got, he was. He was in the hospital for like a week that one time because uh, that bull tore down a gate. and got A him. bull tore down a gate at a y stockyard. He, he wasn't even. He was in the little vet room. Yeah. And, and a bull tore his way into there and got him. Yep. And so. Um, I think they life him out of there. Yep. They did. And he's lucky to be alive. And then he got kicked by a horse. And then at the fair. Somebody else's steer got loose and stomped on him. Stomped on him. He's not very lucky. He's not. I told him he 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 wants to be a cowboy, and I told him I said it's just not a lucky thing, is it, son? No. Yeah. I told yeah, him this, maybe that was God's way rap. to. Yeah, I did just tease him, Tom. Um, the first thing last year we took up um, snowballs and hid under their Christmas tree that light up. They still don't know who did that, do they? They were playing with the dog with one the other day. Yeah. They're, they still have them. lighting up in the dark, and the dog goes and gets them. Yep. Um, and they're just little cloth snowballs. Um, and then right after his first serious accident, we took rope crosses up there, correct? Mm -hmm. um, we don't have one in Eddie's trailer yet, though. We really need to get one there. Um, and Dad has been in and out of the hospital. He's had diabetes, what, all his life, really. Mm -hmm. And so every once in a while, he ends up in the hospital and Archie will go do his chores and stuff and um so just just kind of a it's a good thing he married a nurse is is all I can say <laughs> his wife is a nurse she's a trauma nurse isn't she ER nurse ER nurse whatever they call them so, so anyway funny. yep she's not very good when it comes to her own family though no she goes to pieces when it's her own because she knows everything and you can't calm her down because you can't just tell her, well, your chances are. She already knows the chances, and she already knows what and can go wrong. And she can look at it and tell what it is. And she can tell. tell how bad she it is. She can't lie. Yeah, you can't lie to her. So she's like, you're lying to me. Because if this happens and this happens, and, oh, my God, my baby, you know, and, uh -huh. or my husband. And she loves him death, and she's a little bitty thing, just sweet as can be. But she does go to pieces when it comes to medical stuff in her family. But, uh, yeah, it's just a little too much yeah, but anyway, you've been working on what for them Some because they have a little girl too, and and she's not as close with RJ, but the boys are his buddies, correct? Yeah. Nathan and Owen are, are they just love RJ to death, they love coming down here and and playing, so um, but uh, they actually like RJ to babysit for them, don't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so and there's no babysitting about it it's just like here tag along yep so anyway he's been working on their tie strings you need to get them and show them sure so but uh, he's got well and the boys got to pick their colors didn't they yeah he just asked them to pick some colors he didn't tell them what he was making them he just said pick some colors and the one he said he wanted his bright. RJ always does bright pink, you know. And so he wanted to be like RJ. And you got it caught on a snowflake. <laughs> the other one wanted the blue. And the other one just likes blue. Well, he so. was going to pick uh, something else, like camo or something. But then I guess RJ made him, something else. made him a solid color. Yeah, I was like, well, but, pick because you'll lose the camo ones in the grass. Yeah. And so this is the blue tie string, and we're gonna get them all wrapped up. Mm -hmm. We gotta, we'll have to coil them down real small and wrap them up, and then a pink one. And what is this braid called, son? Oh, these, okay. these are the reason that he does these is not everybody does these. You can get tie strings anywhere, correct? Mm -hmm. 
but I mean, no one cord. does the square Loose. cord lucid braid on them. Mm -hmm. So it makes them, um, no one can take them from the boys and say, these are mine. And they can say, no, nobody has a square one like that. Um, Eddie's got a couple that you've made him, right? Yeah. And the boys are always trying to take them. So we know they'll like them. All right. Anyway, so pretty much Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. I am all about Christmas. I love it. I did, um, make some <laughs> lotion bars. Oh, um, did we tell them about that? I need another permit for, are you reeling in a cat? I don't know. I'm just pulling on my strings. <laughs> we did find out we needed a. I had to spend the morning at the CPA's office, and he did a lot of research, and we ended up going through a bunch of stuff. And um, nope, no kitty cat followed. Yeah, and uh, I oh, have to I'm have a good fisherman. You have to have bait. Um, so Don't I have to have yet shit. another certificate before we can put our online shop back up, because we apparently missed one. Yeah, and we can no longer window. sell at the farmer's market for tax reasons. It's just kind of, the farmer's market, we're being told, is exempt, okay? So, um, when we go and sell at a farmer's market, there, Oklahoma has certain laws that, um, and I have to grow a certain percentage of the things that I use, like my goat's milk soap I can sell there because I do the goat's milk soap, and then, I mean, I milk the goats, and then when I put in like a tomato, it's from my own garden. It is vine picked. So the people putting on the market that have this law in place say that those things, because it's less than a certain percentage of things bought to put in that. I have to buy the lie. Anyway. Um, oh, a little update thing came up. Um, anyway, so they're saying I am tax exempt because that falls under the farmer's market law. But the Oklahoma Tax Commission says no. And I'm caught in the middle. So our CPA, we hired a new CPA. Um, we had a tax man, but I couldn't get him to call me back. I couldn't get him to discuss this with me. I don't know if he's a certified CPA or not. I just know he's done my taxes since I was 16. Um, and it actually wasn't him. It was his father-in-law. But his father-in-law has since retired, had cancer. You know, I, I'm almost 50 years old. So he's been doing mine since I was like 16, 17 years old. He's the only person I've ever had do my taxes. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. But I went and hired an actual CPA. He went through everything. He said, we're doing everything right, except for, he says, I'm caught in the middle of this. The people running the new um, farmer's market, they enacted it just a few years ago to get people to encourage to sell locally and buy locally. And I'm caught between them and the Oklahoma Tax Commission. And he said, it'll get me in more trouble than not. He said, so just go ahead and do what the Oklahoma Tax Commission said. We're not looking at a whole lot of money. He said, it's better to be able to stay in business and do your farm stuff as opposed to losing it all because you are caught in the middle and don't know who to believe. He said, honestly, they're both telling you right because the laws don't agree. So, pretty much, we had to stop all sales online. We will get that opened up hopefully after this weekend. I'm going to get it done this weekend get all the paperwork in and get it in and then we can reopen those shops so it just is going to take me a little time and of course they called me the Wednesday before Thanksgiving the tax commission did and said hey you're in, in violation of this and I said well I have a guy that does all that and he told me he says okay tell him to look at this 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 well then I couldn't get the appointment until la this week so I had to shut the shop down and apparently this is a, a point of contention. If you even have an Etsy shop in the state of Oklahoma, you're supposed to have one of these permit things. And if you're even a crafter, you're supposed to, if you go and sell at little church bazaars, you're supposed to have this um, other permit thing. I don't know. I'm just going to do it. My CPA says and get back to business like it should be. So. That's what we're going to do. And he just kind of looked at me because this is why small farms went out. Because I have to have um, an egg packing 
permit, which is about 50 bucks a year. Then I have to have a meat permit because when we slaughter, everybody knows that's what Gordy's here for. He's got a bad leg. He'll never be able to take his full weight. He's here to go in freezer camp. Um, now, to cover my cost of my slaughter, I sell the other half because there's only three of us. If we put a whole cow in the, the freezer, number one, my freezer isn't that big. But in order for me to legally um, have that meat go to someone else's home, I have to have another certificate from the USDA. So I have that certificate. Then, as long as I don't sell 100 gallons of goat's milk, I don't have to have the goat milk one. But I can't sell cheese or butter or any of that stuff without another permit. So I'm not doing the whole goat thing permit. I change it into soap. Then I don't have to have it. It's about a thousand dollars to get the other um, dairy permit stuff, and I'm not—I I can't afford to do that. Um, but on the other hand, and this is the thing, guys, if stop, if I get this tax commission one and don't sell at the farmers market, I don't need my egg packing license, so that saves me like fifty bucks. It's twenty dollars for the new permit, and it lasts three years. Um, and then it's wow. fifty dollars for the one. So I'm actually going to be saving money, but I can't take and deliver my eggs anymore, um, which I only delivered them to the farmers market anyway. So it is what it is. It's government. It's confusing, and in the state of Oklahoma, it's just confusing. the laws. Confusing. It's more like Greek. The laws don't mesh. So anyway, all right, we're off of here. I will talk to you guys later. Have Bye, a merry boy. Christmas. Bye.